Okay, we should be live, I hope. Okay, sorry guys, uh, apologies for the late start. I had some trouble with my audio, so hopefully I should be up and running now. Uh, for those of you that are new here, uh, I'm Paul and this is Alexandra. We're both essential coaches for Run It Once. And during the stream, we're going to have a little promo, which is you can sign up to either essential or elite. And if you pay for your first month, you get a second month free. So I'll just put the code discount in the chat. And when you go to checkout, just make sure you use the code stream. Yeah, it's a new offer, so make sure you take advantage of it. It's quite a good deal in our opinion. Um, the topic for today's stream is going to be playing as a caller in three bad pots in position. Um, this is, uh, for me, I think it's quite an interesting topic because sometimes on turns we should have some shoves, on flops we should have some raises in certain scenarios and I think, you know, most people just don't find those. Um, so yeah, we are going through to look through some hands that our students sent us and yeah, check it with the solver if needed. Also, if you enjoy our streams... Um, Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Make sure, yeah, make sure you also join our Discord. We have free weekly study sessions for our community, which are quite similar to this. And there you can also send us hands. So yeah, make sure to join that if you enjoy the stream. That being said, should we get into the hands? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so in this first hand, we open King Queen suited on the button and we get tripled by the big blind. Um, what I would say here is that against most opponents, I would be a bit more careful against big blind three bats because most, I mean, villains should find here some polar three bats, such as, I don't know, king four suited, or it depends, different charts recommend different hands, but the idea is they should always find some three bats that can be quite unintuitive. And because of that, especially in lower stakes, most people tend to under three by the big blind with, with bluffs, so they end up with a, with a stronger range. Um, this hand will be a mix between a call and sometimes we can use this as a bluff, it, as a four bat bluff, it has nice blockers to their shoves and strongest hands, and also has equity against a bunch of hands that will call four bats here. Um, here we decide to go for a call. Paul, is there anything you want to add about preflop? Uh, no, I think you covered everything in preflop. Sounds good. Uh, we have a comment in the chat. Kat says, are these the two freshest poker coaches in existence? <laughs> Indeed we are, Kat. Indeed we are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, we see a flop of Jack 9-7. Again, this is quite interesting. It's going to depend a lot of opponents and rake structures and people are going to 3 bat 10 8 suited in the big blind very frequently, personally I do. <laughs> uh, and some people are going to call it on the button, but in higher rake structures, you know, we, as, as in position, we shouldn't really have that. Um, this board, I don't think should be range bad, although exploitatively you can, I don't think it's a huge mistake to range bad it, to be honest. Um, and we face a half pot bad on this jack high board. I don't think we should have many races, but if we if we assume big blind is range betting, then we should probably find some races. This hand, you know, two over cards, a gut shot, a backdoor flash draw. I think I would just pure call it. Don't see any reason to do anything else. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with uh, nearly all of your comments. One thing I would just uh, add on to though is um, when we're talking about this type of board. Um, you know, so we could range better out of position. Not 100% sure that's true. And even if it is, if we look in a solver, one thing I think people should always just keep in mind is that when you're out of position, range betting is less effective than in position just because, um, you know, your equity realization is going to be worse playing out of position rather than in position. But that's just something to keep in mind, not something I'm saying is, is bad in this spot or, you know, in some spots it would be bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, I completely agree with that. I, and that's the thing, I'm not sure how it works from the big blind. It's a bit trickier because everyone uses different ranges. So 
you should be more careful but from the small blind button shouldn't call all that often ace jack offsuit or over pairs therefore the jack high boards are going, going to be quite good for for out of position we go for a call um there's a five which is pretty much a blank doesn't really prove pretty much anything in either ranges and villain goes for another half pot bet and um, i think this is I think I would say this is quite an easy call, to be honest. Um, shoves in the spots is something I haven't studied all that much. And it's, I, I think that's a bit of a leak of mine because I don't really have enough turn shoves here. Um, I'm not sure it would make sense to shove this, although I think we could get some better hands to, to fold. But yeah, the standard would be to just call, especially against this size. And I would also be wondering, you know, what's the threshold where we start having some folds with this hand? Like how big does he have to bet for this hand to not be a continue anymore? Um, yeah, what, what do you think? Yeah, I'd personally also um, just pure call. Um... And again, I agree with you. I know in these situations, there are going to be some spots where we want to start having shoves. Um, so maybe it'd be a good spot to maybe look at GTO Wizard and, and see how turn looks. Yeah, um, okay, let's do that. Although I'm, I'm not sure we're going to have that many shoves against a half pot size, just because the odds yeah. of calling get, get better. But yeah, it would be interesting to check what's happening against the bigger size, because that's where I think we're going to start finding some shoves. Again, this big blind three batting range, uh, it's probably not going to be super accurate. It's more like something that I would, closer to what I would use. Um, are we on GTOEs? We are. Yeah, we are. Hey, Patrick. Nice to have you watching. Okay, so we see already this should be quite a polar C, but assuming uh, this is this is the GTOE's ranges, I don't think anyone is actually playing this. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah, I've been using the ranges. Yeah, I don't think we should even try to get it. I think we should try to get close to the frequencies, but maybe do like simplify it in a way that you know, easier for a human, like what are we going to do? Three bet is 22% and this 15 and this 28, you know, it's it's a bit like... Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's just change it to half pot. 38. Oh, I thought it'd go up more. And again, with these ranges, it's obviously going to be a very low C betting frequency just because it three bets so many stuff that doesn't connect with this range, but... Yeah, I, I, I think most people, in, me included, are three betting a bit more mergy, therefore you can you can see bet more often. Um, so yeah, because it's such a polar range, we don't really have races, it's not great for us. Yeah, one, one thing I would say is in, in this situation, when you see a solver implementing a 5% frequency of, of raises, I would mostly try not to implement that too often, um, again you're just going to be splitting your range and it's going to be difficult to keep track of your range on turns and rivers. And, and I think just simplifying flop to just pure, you know, going up to 70% call and, and not having that raise is, is probably going to be fine. Yeah, it's definitely going to be fine. Although there's no turns and rivers because the size it uses here is all in. Also, GT always calls aces in on the button for some reason, which is... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do agree, though, that we shouldn't really have races here. I should put my phone on silent. I forgot to do that. But let's see. What was the turn? It was a five. Also, I'm very surprised it falls ace queen with the backdoor flash draw. Also, king queen is a fold sometimes. That's, um, yeah, something I didn't notice. Yeah, that's that's actually, yeah, we shouldn't um, just gloss over that. I think that's very important that if you're looking at king queen here and it's indifferent on the floor. Um, I think it's obviously going to be much closer on the turn as well. We're always going to be con continuing here with the diamonds just because sometimes you can go runner runner into a flush. Um, but it looks like every other combo without a diamond is, is almost indifferent. Yeah, although we need to keep in mind that he's only batting 31% um, of his range. and Yeah. In reality, I think people are probably batting way more often with hands that we are doing much better against with King Queen off. So I, I, I don't think I would fold the flop still. 
Yeah, that's a that's a nice uh, caveat. I agree. Um, okay, and now here he's apparently supposed to just show off again because he's filtering his range on the flop a lot and he's batting with a very polar range from the flop. So by the turn, he's going to have probably a lot of like his good bluffs and then his value combos. I think he bats something like this. And also like his uh, three bat size preflop is a bit bigger. So that that's making it maybe close to relevant and now yeah we're apparently just folding this and our shove percentage is not that that big. Yeah, one thing though just to keep in mind is if you do not implement races on the flop then obviously on the turn you can have a bigger frequency of races because you'll have more of that jack nine, more of that jack ten. That'll that'll wanna shove at some frequency. Uh, but yeah, I think that's really interesting. Now, his, his 45% size king queen is just almost a pure fall. Uh, that's definitely a mistake I'd be making in game. I would for sure be overcalling that. Um, yeah, what about you? Do you think you'd overcall? Yeah, I think I would. I think I would overcall. Um, yeah, for sure. Because I would be thinking, you know, I still have two overcards uh, and the cut shot. But the reality is. Our outs aren't that clean, obviously, except for the 10. And even the 10, if it's a diamond, is, is it's good, but not the nuts. Um, yeah, yeah. And then when we hit a king or a queen, we can always be like against something like king 10, for example, if we hit a queen or like against a straight, against two pairs. So if, if you think a bit of it a bit deeper, I think it does make sense to fold this hand even against this size. Um, so yeah, we've learned something new today. Yeah, a few uh, comments from the chat. Um, first of all, thanks, Dean. Uh, we, we like giving these sessions. Uh, so BB said, um, sorry, underscore, says BB has typically a mix of strong hands at this depth, dominating King Queen merge with middle into connected combos, hit in this range, thus I guess we're far behind on average. Um, so yeah, maybe have a look at the the equity chart just from flop and see just how both, both ranges are doing. Um, so on the flop is going to be quite close. That's because big blend is like again. If you go back to the range, it is not going to be just middling suited connectors, but he's gonna have a lot of these like king seven, king three, a lot of offsuit sax. So he's not really hitting at least with this range. He's not really hitting that well. But obviously, if I think um, a real big blend through batting range that people do use in game is probably gonna hit this board a bit better. Um, I agree. Yeah, one thing um, just to keep in mind when we're looking at that flop range, that three bets is again um, exploitatively a lot of the players at at all stakes, even at you know two hundred and now are still not finding enough uh, big blind three bets. So uh, when people aren't going to be finding those uh, you know king six, king five, queen four type of hands, then they are going to have a stronger range on this board on average. You know, because again they might choose some hands that connect with this board a lot more, like queen jack or king jack, uh, ace jack type of stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we got another question. So Zen Madman Poker says, if they're betting way too often, does that make having flop raises more useful? What do you think? Uh, yeah, it definitely does in most spots. Um, again, it depends. Like that. That's a that's a common principle that you're going to see. Although there are going to be exceptions where um, we just want to call down. But yeah, the rule of thumb is the more they see bet the flop the more we want to raise but we can actually do an experiment here um uh, i don't uh, let's make him range but I, I think that's going to be terrible i don't think people are going to actually range but especially with this range but let's see you know if we face a small size see bet range how often you see now we are starting to raise a bit more often and smaller um uh, but on this drag high board it's something you won't see that often um uh, raises here I think if you make it 10 high or queen high, that's going to be a bit different, but yeah. But yeah, yeah, I agree. And again, and again um, I think a lot of raises in these situations can come on the turn as well, when the stack to ratio is a little bit smaller. Um, well, I guess we already saw what, what, what happens in this end. Yeah, so. let's, let's jump back, have a look at a few more hands. Um, well, we didn't see what happened in this one, though. 
Did we fall? No, we called. No, we did call. Which yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame him. Blame him for this, but I think we should be a bit more careful and aware of the SPR and of the outs that we have. Um, now Atan makes a straight and he checks. Well, I think this is probably going to be a mandatory bluff. Um, I don't really see worse hands in our range. Um, in terms of blockers, I'm not really sure what what to think because it does block some jack acts that he might have. It does block some queens and kings which might fold, but still we have no showdown value and when villains check here I think they are not going to protect their ranges enough with straight type of hands and it's probably going to be an overfolded spot, so I would uh, I would bluff it. Yeah, I agree. I think um again it this this hand, like you said, it blocks queens, it blocks kings. Um, it would be nice if we had, say, the king of hearts just to block a, 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 an extra combo of uh, the king jack. Um, but yeah, once we get to this situation, I think it is a spot where, um, you know, our 7, 8 improves, our 8, 9 improves, um, any of our um, 6x's are straight as well as 10x. So I think, yeah, we're going to want to jam this spot probably very often with King Queen. I think I would probably always just end up jamming this once Villain checks. Again, like Alexandra said, I don't think that out of position will probably be protecting his range as much as he should. Uh, yeah, I agree. And when I but when I was saying we block kings and queens, I don't think that's necessarily good. I think those are hands that might end up folding here. Uh, not sure, but yeah, I think that's quite likely. And if we assume kings and queens are um not folding here then we should like I, I think another common mistake that people are doing here as imposition is not value betting thin enough and maybe just going for a shove with a straight uh, but in reality yeah. I think any two pair here is probably good enough to shove yeah I should have expanded on that because when I was saying you know our 7 8 improves our 8 9 improves I was uh, implying that those would be hands I would probably be shoving with but again um I, I think this is probably a spot that in position, population, don't shove thin enough. Um, maybe we can have a look at GTO Wizards and just, just have a quick look on this this run out. If it's not folding everything by the turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one moment. Oops. So, where is my GTO? Okay. So, bet, call, five. Again. Oh, it remembered. AI power. Okay, and the river was a uh, eight. So you see, even out of position, is supposed to still go for for thin value bets here with these hands, which I think it's going to be very unlikely. And see how much ten x they are. Checking, you know, this is a pure check. This is a pure check. A standoff, all very close, like more check than bad. Same here. I don't think in practice this is going to be accurate. And because of this, you might see us not shoving as thin, but yeah, if we assume he's batting more 10x, it's probably going to shove those. So, um, probably easier to look here. You see two pairs. Um, it's just top two that are worth a shove in this solver scenario. But again, if we assume he's not checking close to as many 10x, I'm sure we're going to bet more often. We can outlock, but it's probably just going to be a waste of time. Just believe it. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think we need to outlock. But again, something to just keep in mind here is, um, you know, say 7-6 uh, going for the shove. Again, this is something, again, in, in lower stakes and in live games, you'll see in position players just checking behind with a 6 here because, um, you know, they're so scared of running into 10x. And uh, I think that is not something that's ever really going to happen too often. First of all, that opposition don't protect their range. And um, yeah, I think I think six x is still just worth it, worth the shove as, as well as those uh, two pairs, like we said. So uh, I was uh, I was laughing because I like I just realized a six makes a straight, and maybe in game I would be like, oh, I guess I should bluff my six seven here, and then I bluff <laughs> and then he calls kings, and I'm like fuck, and I see I see the ball going to me, I'm like what? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, should we you, go? You need, to, you need to stop drinking whilst you're playing. <laughs> I, I'm not drinking whilst I'm playing. Shut up. <laughs> um, should we go to the next hand then? 
Uh, yeah, A. Moorfield said, uh, what do we do with Queen Jack in this spot? Hopefully that just um, just helped you because you would have been able to see on uh, the solver page. Um, so looking at it now, it shows that Queen Jack is sometimes uh, jamming on the river. I guess this is I guess this is going to be one of those weird like value bet slash bluffs, you know, where you can potentially get better to fold and worse to call. Can yeah. we just have a quick, quick I look think at it's that? Gonna be a bluff to be honest don't really see where signs that they're calling yeah see I, i'm a solver look you oh, got oh, oh no that's too bad <laughs> 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 no i was seeing the ace jack suited fold in and then i seen um jack seven call in um but yeah i, I missed that jack seven is actually a two pair so yeah yeah you're gonna get you know better jack x to fold and aces kings queens to fold which i guess so, so it is it is just a bluff with queen jack and, and king jack yeah, although like in, in practice I wouldn't care. I, I think blockers are a bit overrated, especially in the river spots. Because first of all, people don't construct their ranges like a solver up to that point. And second, we don't really know what they call it, what they don't, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. When, so yeah, in, in answer to your question, personally, I think I would just always check back with Queen Jack there. Um, but you can see the solver does some funky stuff. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can just always bluff it. <laughs> Maybe. It depends. It really depends who you're playing against. It's important to know, uh, to try to have his tendencies. Because some people, like, if, if we think he's always folding, folding aces, kings, queens, it's probably great to always bluff it. But if he never, if we think he never folds those, then uh, it becomes way worse. Are we back on our hold them? Yep, let's do it. Okay, here we have open tens from MP and we get rebat to 12 big blinds. I think this was GG and L50. And as nitty as it sounds, I think this is a very low EV call, close to break even against this size. Uh, I'm not sure if GT Wizard Sims are using this size from the small blind, but yeah, I think this is. With, with the rake structure, this is very close. Yeah, this is actually a massive leak of populations. Like every time I do a database review, I see things like this, that like, this seems nitty, but if you look at charts at like 50 and LGG rake, it, it probably is, like you say, um, break even, maybe from folding sometimes. Really but then you also see, that. you also see players um, just always continuing pocket nines, pocket eights, pocket sevens, too many um, suited connectors. So this is probably a spot where a lot of people can just improve their win rate just by over, well, just by it's in the frequencies of, of folding these hands a, a bunch more. And um, A. Moorfield said, so Ace Jack has enough showdown value to not need to bluff. So yeah, exactly that. And as, as Dean said, it almost went max queen 10. Hijack against small blind. You see, tens is a mix, but I'm not sure if it's a four bet. Or... Yeah, it might be a four, a four bet bluff, maybe. Yeah, how do I go to... Come, come off this. You, you're on the AI. Go to the... Yeah, I don't use the solution library. Solutions the... library. Yeah, there we go. Now just go to the preflop spot. No, no, okay. don't click anything. You're already on there. Am I? Well, click click NL50 GTO, the top one. Okay. No, no, the down. Down. Yeah, there. No, not smaller. Just GTO. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Click that. I don't and think then... this is GG, though. Okay, well, we can just have a look at NL50 and... See, see what that's doing. Go oh, oh sorry. This is. Oh, oh don't, sorry, don't sorry, sorry, don't sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so you see, it's. Uh, it's <laughs> I read it. <laughs> Alexandra's acting like me. I'm usually the computer illiter illiterate one. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, you see, it's already mixing in folds, and it's probably for batting as a bluff, not for value. Um, I wouldn't yeah, be surprised if Jack's now becoming different. Ah, they don't. But... This, this this was um this was recently talked about um, by Luke Johnson. Um, so for those of you that have the elite um, content, highly recommend checking out his videos. Um, he he does a little breakdown in one of his play and explains that he posted recently about uh, pocket tens here becoming a four bet bluff. So it's it's really indifferent and it can get some hands with equity to fold. So if you go back to the uh, if you want to click on the ranges, we don't have to go too, in, too too deep into it, but just as long as you know that this is not meant to be a pure continue and GG rake is going to be even higher than in these charts. So, you know, as you can see here, right, we're never supposed to be calling seven, eight suited, not really supposed to be calling eight, nine suited, 10, nine suited, queen, jack suited, queen, 10 suited, jack, 10 suited. So 
all of those hands, I bet everybody in the chat is way over defending those hands in this spot. Never mind pocket tens and nines and eights as well. Yeah, and the other thing is that the three bet size we faced in this scenario is actually Was bigger. even bigger, yeah. Um, and yeah, if you don't have the elite subscription, you have a chance to get it now and get one. If you get one month, you can get another one for free during the stream and a bit after the stream if you use the code STREAM <laughs> at checkout. Uh, Paul is going to link the offer in the chat. Should, okay. we, should we see what's happening in the hand then? Yeah. Um, so our student said this was against an aggressive opponent, which might or might not be relevant. Um, and he goes for a check, which if we are against an aggressive opponent here, I already find this check quite weird and very oriented towards showdown, showdown value hands with King X. Because, you know, if you have trash, you can just pretty much range by this board and get away with it. And especially aggressive opponents, are, I think, are going to be even more likely to do that. So, uh, once we face a check here, we should, I mean... We should probably be quite polar and have a low betting frequency. I've seen different teams here, either using like a half pot bet or smaller bets, but we never see a high betting frequency in this spot. And tens, I don't really see any any point in betting this. Uh, what do you think? Any any other thoughts on flop? Yeah, again, just uh, pretty easy to, to to skip over this too at the moment, just because yeah, we have a, a slam dunk check. I don't think anyone really. Think any anything different at this moment, and it just gets a little bit worse on the turn. See what happens here. Okay. We we'll face another check, and yeah, I guess we check back. We still have some showdown value against stuff like nines, eights. Although we don't think this this particular opponent is gonna have those all that often. Um, if we start, I, I don't think we need to start bluffing tens in this scenario, though it's a tight range spot. And as you saw in, previously, we're not really going to have a lot of small pocket pairs. Um, but still, this looks a bit too good to go to start bluffing, especially without the heart. Uh, yeah, yes. no, not sure though. So it seems it seems a strange one because um, against an aggressive opponent, like you said, you'd expect them to start, um, you know, putting a lot of their bluffs into a bet on the, on the flop and maybe even on the turn as well. This card is, uh, also the heart is not good. The ace is pretty good for his range. Um, so when he checks twice, I do think like maybe he does just have some, some type of showdown hand. We do beat nines and eights. So I think I would continue to check here, but I am at the point where I'm debating whether I want to turn this into a bluff. If I had tens with a heart, I think I would. Mm, no, again, yeah, I don't know. I think this this is very close whether I'd bluff it. Because we're, we're we're really struggling for bluffs, and there's there's a lot of hands in his range that are going to be folding by the river as well. Um, yeah, well, well, yeah, I think it's close anyway. So yeah, we can we can move on. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking if he does have those kind of showdown value weaker hands, that those are probably be like king ten suited, jack ten suited, and we really block those. Um, so maybe that's not great, but. Yeah, I don't think it would be terrible to start bluffing this. I definitely not terrible to check. It's probably quite close as Paul says. And now he goes for a three quarters. Um, yeah, I think this is just quite quite simple. Pure jam. <laughs> no, I, I think this is just a very easy fold. Now I think I, I would I prefer to start bluffing on the turn rather than in this line on the river. Um, would you like to check what we start bluffing with on the turn? I think we, we, we can have a quick check, yeah. Understand. Maybe not stay on it too often. I think this hand's pretty standard. No, it's not really much to, to talk about. Yeah, this hand is quite standard, but it, it is quite interesting to see, you know, what, what we are supposed to bluff with on the turn. Um, let's make it small blind versus under the gun. Do you see it? No, I d just go. You can go to prefill if you just click X and just prefill. I do have ranges three, but small blind versus under the gun. Okay. Call three, but under the gun versus small blind. Um. 
Okay, so Dean says he's definitely not fooled in Jack Ten Seward. Yeah, that's that's a common common leak in in, in all players at all stakes. Um, yeah, people are definitely over uh, over calling those. Uh, a Moorfield said, "If we had a heart in our hand, would we begin bluffing here?" Yeah, I think it's. I think I think I would start to bluff. Um, I would even start to bluff sometimes with tens without a heart because we are really going to struggle for bluffs. Um, and again, I think these, you know, six, uh, sorry, sevens, eights, nines. I think I would I would turn those into bluffs quite often as well. Um, again, like Alexandra said, a lot of his showdownable hands are going to be things like uh, king ten or uh, jack ten type of hands. So maybe not having a ten is quite good because. Um, you're gonna find that he's gonna have more calls on maybe the turn, more folds on river, or maybe just you know more folds on turn as well, depending on how nitty he is. Yeah, agreed. Um, and about the you know not folding Jack Ten suited, I, I just wanted to add that you need to realize how uh, dominated that hand is going to be and how unhappy yeah. you are to see any kind of top pair and facing multiple pets you're not gonna flop two pairs or straights all that often so it's just not a great hand you know it's more like a weak suited connector um here he's supposed to range jack on the turn which i find very interesting yeah so one thing amonfield said as well is how do we not bluff the royal flush gut shot on the turn um whilst i see what you're saying one thing you could keep in mind here is that when we've got pocket tens with a heart, sometimes we can just check the turn and just win against, um, you know, pocket queens without a heart when the river is a heart. So sometimes just checking behind here will help us to realize EV. Um, so as you can see here, right, not all pocket tens with a heart are, are always bluffing. And that is going to be because, yeah, sometimes they can just check behind and they get to win um, against, you know, ace five club sometimes when, when the river's a heart or, yeah, or, or when the river's, river's a queen as well. And um, also GTO Wizard has this nice feature where you can see how many value it removes and how many trash. And even though I just said blockers are overrated, you see like these ones are just removing a lot of trash and pretty much no value. So yeah, it's not the greatest bluffs. And it seems like we do bluff these lower pocket pairs and we also start bluffing six sacks if we didn't already on the flop. So yeah, this is... Um, not the greatest bluff apparently okay um should, i'm not sure we should look to the end of the hand but if we're here anyway um yeah there's no no says it's probably just gonna be yeah, a fold anyway. it's, it's, yeah 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 you can see pure fold even against the smaller size so even queens oh we're on hm3 it says really oh my bad um, yeah, if you can just quickly run back through that. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry that we are so bad at this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, we were showing how our betting frequency on the flop is quite low, and we prioritize betting these lower pairs with a heart. These are going to be our main bluffs. And when we check back, I found quite interesting that Big Blend is actually supposed to... Um, check range on this turn. If you think about it, it makes sense because when you see three Broadways here, it just blocks pretty much all the flashes he can have, uh, but we're still going to have some. And then we do start bluffing some tens here, but just with uh, with the heart. And I was showing here how um, we remove a lot of trash with tens, but not really value. And when we are thinking of what to bluff, it's going to be, we're going to start bluffing six X and these lower pairs that we didn't bet on the flop. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what we've been talking about, right? So yeah, just to, just to go over that point there, just for, for some of you that might not be so familiar with, with solvers and what Alexandra is talking about, when she says about um, removing trash or value, obviously when you want to turn a hand into a bluff, you really want to be able to... Um, I block the, the trash that's gonna fold. Yeah, and we'll block value that's gonna call, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, should we go next hand then? Yeah, let's do it. We Make are sure on, on HM3. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Team says, uh, no worries, we're here for the poker skills, not computer skills. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You can it. check out our uh, our working with, with computers uh, course if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can join our Discord for the poker skills. Um, yeah, that's true. I'll put the link can... for our Discord in the chat. Um, if you'd like more poker skills rather than computer <laughs> skills, um, you can check that out. 
<laughs> okay, cool. Um, here we get three bats to a very small size. Usually I think this should be quite close to a pure fold in a high rake environment. I'm not sure in, in like lower rake environments, it's probably gonna be close to break even. Uh, but yeah, I guess this size we're never folding. I wouldn't. <laughs> No, yeah, I would pure call as well. Uh, quite interesting that they go for a smaller size. I would either think we're up against maybe a recreational or, or maybe not not the most studied right dealer at this point. Yeah, probably recreational. Or maybe they're just not used to 3x opens on the button. They don't really know what, what to do against this. If you feel open 2x, I don't think 3 betting to 9 big blind is bad necessarily, but against 3 big blinds, that's much different. Yeah. Okay. Um, we face a quarter size c bat here which i think is decent on this board you can obviously do a uh, constructive strategy with different sizes but this is this is a decent size um uh, i think that this is gonna be a pure call here not don't really see the point of raising definitely never folding um and now we face a check and here i think this spot is quite interesting, as even though we have an ace and a flash draw, there's not. It's this is not really a value hand, cause you know, like we may get called by kings, queens, especially like, yeah, those have a gut shot. Our ace acts are blocked by the board, but overall, I don't think this is gonna be a very high betting frequency on the turn. Um, and when the batting frequency is not very high, we should be a bit more polar. Don't think it would be a mistake to bat this, depending on the size, but I would just mostly check it back. What do you think? Yeah, uh, it, it obviously is a, a value. It would be a value bet on the turn. I think we could definitely um, bet it sometimes, or we could check it. I think, you know, if we looked in the solver, the EV is going to be relatively close. And people may even make some calling mistakes here, maybe calling some hands that they shouldn't. Um, Against like a medium to biggish size, you know, with the sort of size that we'd be betting here, I wonder if, you know, something like pocket queens without a hat or, or even with may have to fold sometimes, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, maybe people do make some mistakes calling too much here and maybe they don't protect their range as much as they should. Um, but yeah, I would, I would personally just probably love to check this back a lot and then start to go for value on, on river. But, yeah, I think it's close to them. Um, okay, we did go for a check back and we now river a flash on a board where there's a bunch of full houses and not a lot of percent to call us. And we face a three quarter spot size bat, so um, I think this is very close to a bluff catcher, if not almost a pure bluff catcher. Because if you think of his value range, you know, what, what worse hand is he batting? Like, he could have some worse flushes from time to time if he goes for, you know, three bats with something like seven, eight, or eight, nine of hearts. But those, I, I would just expect those to mostly barrel turn. Um, and yeah, there's just like not not a lot of worse, worse value combos. I don't know if he's gonna be smart enough to <laughs> find the. A value bet like he shouldn't he probably shouldn't value bet queen x here so yeah i think this is close to bluff catcher so what i'm trying to say by this is like maybe some people would think of uh, we have the nuts left we should shop here i think that would be probably a big mistake um but yeah i don't think we can fold either so we do go for a call yeah um and he shows up with nines which kind of makes sense. Um, it's probably gonna get a bunch of better hands to fold. It doesn't really have any showdown value here. And if if it does have showdown value against some hands, those hands should probably start bluffing at this point. So I don't think his play is bad. I think this is actually quite decent. Um, I might be wrong. Do you wanna check in a solver what's happening here? Um, no, I was just gonna reiterate the point before we seen showdown that um, yeah, in this situation, it, it's definitely um, a bluff catcher just because of the way the board interacts and the way that he is going to often play his range on the turn. So you're going to find people bet in hands like pocket kings um, on the flop and then check in turn. Um, again, though, yeah, I'm not sure how many other full houses really get to that line. 
like pocket jacks, pocket tens are probably going to be bet. Ace jack, ace ten are going to probably be bet on the turn as well. Um, but yeah, I still don't think that this would really be too much of a value shove. Um, so I, yeah, I agree in, in checking back. Also, I do like his bluff with with pocket nines with the nine and a half, but I would have just chosen much bigger size. I'm not sure if that's GTO. Um, but yeah, we can check if you like. I mean, it's uh, I don't know what we're checking. Yeah, just this hand in general. I think it's quite quite interesting, and I would also be curious if we face a. If we, are we on GTO? Uh, I think so. If we face a check here, are we going for a value bet? In I think in practice we should, uh, because again people are not gonna protect the ranges enough. But I, I wonder in theory, you know how how this works. I think it's quite an interesting hand. Um, and in terms of uh, at the moment, yeah, okay, we are on GTO, is it now? Okay, so we never have a three here. Let's see, we just have a four. Uh, apparently, we can raise sometimes, and I find I find this quite interesting that we have so many raises on this board uh, against a range that is you know so tight. It's just forty two percent of of his range batting here for a quarter. I think in practice, people could actually be range batting this quite often. Uh, so if the solver raises here as often, I think this is a spot where we should probably find some raises in practice. Maybe, I, I think in practice it would probably work even better uh, because people tend to overfall to raises, not three bet enough, and also see bet too often. So all those factors just make us want to raise way more frequently here. Uh, and again, this is a very common thing that you're going to see in these spots that we should have very, very small races as in position. Um, and it's something most villains don't find. So when we are out of position, that actually incentivizes us to see bat more often. Okay, the third one was uh, Ace. Um, yeah, and you see he should keep barreling here very, very frequently, and these lower flashes are, except for 5-6, almost pure bad. So he goes for a check. We should actually pure bad this almost, but we don't. Yeah, and his size is not really GTO. Yep, nine, nine and a half. Should just yeah, jam sometimes. Depends on the combo. <laughs> Apparently, if we have a diamond, what's the difference here? The solver's crazy. Like, what's the difference between having a club or a diamond? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure on that. Yeah, we can't really do much else. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so French French fun says in the chat, uh, I think we're either far ahead or far behind on the turn, I think. So that's a check or just call. Um, I generally agree with that. I think in a lot of situations, I've seen a lot of players that get into this situation where they're either far ahead or far behind. And instead of checking and then facing uh, an uncomfortable spot on the river, you know, having to make a decision, they sometimes just bet on the turn just to be able to check behind on rivers or... Um, you know, not exactly in this situation because it might might still be a value bet, but um, yeah, generally, I think your comment is, uh, is is quite quite good. Although notice we are um, using a small size here, which I think makes sense because if we if we bet bigger, I don't think we're really putting his range in any kind of tough spot. But yeah. when when we bet this, you see now a lot of pair plus gut shots, uh, like queens, king, jack become indifferent. Um, and yeah, people are probably prone to doing mistakes here. So if we if we find the small sizing, we should probably, uh, as the solver says, probably close to pure value by this this hand. Yeah, I think um, that that's probably where we were both going wrong on the on the turn. We were probably imagining uh, a bigger sizing. Yeah. Um, but Terry Terry in the chat said he would uh, bet very often for a twenty percent on the turn. So. Um, I think that's something that could uh, be possible when, when you're betting for, for a much smaller size and you can bet much, much more often. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the solver is showing 40%. But yeah, good thoughts. Okay. And then French Fun says, Jacks and tens are unlikely. He would likely have bet on the flop. King's unlikely, but possible. Three combos, ace king, three combos, ace ten, and ace jack. He would have bet. That's yeah, just a call, I think. So yeah, 
nice thoughts. Yeah, good thoughts. Okay, let's should we see the next one? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, we open. Should we make this the last one? Yes, and catch the bus. <laughs> Um, okay, so we face a three bad jacks. I think this should be very often a four bad, but I don't think it's a mistake to call it sometimes. Um, and we do call and we face a uh, one third C bad here. Um, I think this should be a higher frequency bad, especially if we like if we are in a high rate. Uh, a, a bigger a bigger size in bad sorry. frequency. Sorry, yeah, we don't know what frequency he's batting. A bigger size bad. Because, uh, especially in a high rake environment, 7, 8 shouldn't be a pure call here. And even if it is, he should also have some 7, 8. He should pure have 10s, 9s, even 6s should be a pure 3 bat. So even though this might look like scary, it's not that much of a scary board. His over pairs are, are still very strong here. Um, so yeah, I think, I think he should probably go for a bigger size and be a bit more polar. Um, yeah, this is this is uh, quite an interesting spot because this is a spot that people, especially at lower stakes, play quite differently to how a solver would play. Um, and something you want to keep in mind here when you're button and someone goes for this small size in is just keep in mind that they could have potentially been range betting on the flop. So obviously, you know, we actually have a very strong hand that we're going to be continuing either through a call or a raise. Um, but, you know, if you've got a hand like five, six and, and the turns blank, rivers are blank and, and your opponent's you know, continues. It could be a spot that they potentially have too many hands like, you know, Queen Jack or King Jack, King Queen. Uh, maybe they continue too often with Ace Jack type hands as well. Maybe even Ace Five or Ace Four at some frequency. So it could potentially be a spot where some guys are way overdoing it. Yeah, actually a lot of people if it that that's a very good point. If you look at data, these boards where um Broadways make either gut shots or straight draws or stuff like that and they miss by the river those spots are going to be very over bluffed because first of all they should check those draws on the turn sometimes which people tend to not do and then they should give up some on the river which a lot of people unless they are like 43 when once of flop or 44 yeah um, and something else something else that can can sometimes happen and I've I've got notes against villains that do this is they'll get into this spot and they'll imagine that they're gonna range better but what they're actually doing is they're betting for this size with a lot of their range, but then certain portions of their range that are strong but vulnerable are going for a bigger size. And so you can imagine ace 10, king 10, pocket jacks, those type of hands maybe sometimes go for a bigger sizing. So what ends up happening in that situation is their smaller sizing is being way over bluffed and their bigger sizing obviously contains um, the, the stronger portions of their range. Yeah, good point there. Um, so here with jacks, um, I, as, against the size, I think I would mostly go for a small raise, as you saw previously in the solver. As in position, we, we like to use really small raise sizes here. And with jacks, I think that works very well because it's going to put hands like uh, King Queen, for example, in quite a tough spot. He's going to have sometimes hands like, I don't know, 9, nine 8 or 6, 7 that are going to have to call 10x. is probably never folding. And even like, I don't know, Ace King with the backdoor flash draw against a small race size should probably be close to a pure continue. So yeah, I would also in terms of our hand it needs a lot of protection, doesn't really wanna see a bunch of turns. So yeah, I there's, think Yeah. Yeah, there's actually quite a lot of his range that is gonna um be calling here, you know, the, like you said, the six sevens, but also pocket sevens, pocket eights. Um I think they're also gonna be in a really tough spot versus race as well. Yeah, so I, I think, especially in practice, I prefer raising to calling. Um, and it's nice that we found it and we found the small size. And he just went for a fold. So we can't really talk much about what's happening later in the hand. But I, I think as an advice on how to play this, this spot, I would start finding these almost click raises way more often than a solver would. But once they call, we need to be very careful on turns because we assume they overfall to raises and also not three bat enough. And that means they are going to get to the turn with a much stronger range. While also if we start implementing more of these raises, we're gonna get to the turn with a weaker range. So I think this yeah. works well, but, but we need but, to be careful. When, yeah, when, but on this particular board, I don't think that's gonna be true. Um, so obviously always just keep in mind what, what the board is and and how much out of positions range is going to interact. Because on this board, there, there's a lot of his range that's going to call that's still 
much weaker than Jax here. Yeah. So Jax would obviously continue to be a value bet on, on a, a lot of turns. Um, and Julian says in the chat, hey, uh, no four betting pre. Um, so yeah, pocket jacks on the button. I'm pretty sure it's a mix between um, four yeah. betting and just calling. So yeah, just it's probably just a mix. Um, I'm not sure if the student is mixing here between four betting or whether he's doing this uh, pure. Yeah, I think everyone is finding some four bets here, which we should. It's probably a bit more four betting than calling, but yeah, neither neither is a mistake. Yeah, so A. Morfield says, what do we do against a three bet in this spot, a three bet on the flop? So in this situation, with pocket... <laughs> no, I mean, with, with pocket jacks in this situation, it is going to be a spot that population are probably going to be weighted towards way too many strong hands. Um, That's why we cry. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. I guess we do cry. Um, in a solver, you would see uh, Jack's probably just looking to to just jam and get this in. Um, but yeah, in reality, obviously, take into account who your opponent is. I know you mentioned earlier about playing live. Um, if you play live and uh, you know you're playing against the guy that seems to be studied, seems to be um, playing very well, this could be a spot where you you do just want to start racing your Jacks because even though it's going to be you know, lower EV than in a solver, it still might be really good. Um, but if you're playing against a, a nittier opponent and you know that he's quite tight and he starts to three bet you on the flop, you can just make a, a, an exploitative fold, I, I would imagine sometimes, just because we're going to be blocking some of the hands we want him to have, right? So we, we want him to have king jack, we want him to have queen jack, and uh, we're, we're blocking those type of bluffs. So yeah, keep in mind who you're playing against, especially if you're playing live. Yeah, if we get three, but I guess we still cry and get it in because, like, if we don't have reads, but as Paul said, against the Nitya opponent, we can just go for a fold. As Nitya yeah. as it seems. But remember, the reason we want to implement these raises more often is that we assume they are going to under three batas. So when they do, it is a bit of an alarm sign. Yeah, and French fan, uh, nice, nice comments in the chat again. Um, and yeah, Dean says uh, he'd cry as well. So yeah, <laughs> not not a not a great position um, as in position. Um, so maybe as we're out of position, find some more um, flop three bet bluffs because it's probably a spot that everyone feels is uh, not bluffed enough and and probably makes everyone cry. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Although we we I I don't often find myself in this spot where they raise in position, yeah, and yeah. especially when they do, it's very rarely this this really small size. You know, it's often like. I don't know, 3x or something. Um, and yeah, they, they should actually find some non only in 3 beds. It's quite an interesting spot. I would recommend you, you look into it because there is a lot of exploits to be to be applicable here. Uh, Moorfield says, uh, if we get called and we see a tour clubs on the turn, would we continue betting? So yeah, with pocket jacks, we would definitely just continue betting here because as we said, there's going to be a lot of out of position range that continues here that is weaker. So maybe some six, seven, pocket seven, pocket eight, eight, nine, ten, eight. Um, some jack ten, queen ten, king ten, ace ten, maybe some ace nine. Um, and then there's also going to be the cards that still have equity. So those queen jacks or king queens or king jacks, maybe some ace king at some frequency. So um, yeah, when when I start talk about that whole range, hopefully now you can see how there's there's still a lot of value to be gained against this range. Yeah, but we don't need to shove, because I think that's also a common no, misconception yeah. that yeah, we can't bet small in this spot. So yeah, we can go for another small bet, no need to I would, go I would, huge. I would be, the, the way I'd be thinking about it on the turn when it's a two of clubs is that I want to go for a size that um, a lot of the overcards are just going to fold. So, you know, your king queens and your ace kings or ace queens that decide to call, they're, they're nearly always going to fold against a, a medium sizing. But the pocket sevens and eights and, and all the hands that connect in some way that have a pair or a pair plus draw, they're nearly always going to continue, but they're obviously going to have much less equity than jacks. Yeah, nice thought. All right, should we wrap it up here then? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. hopefully that just answered your, your next question about the sizing. So yeah, not, not um, a huge sizing on term. And yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Um, I think for a little while just after the stream, you can still get uh, a month free of Elite or Essential. So if you sign up using the link in the chat and you use code stream, you pay for your first month and then you get your second month free. So nice savings to be had if you're looking to sign up to run it once where you can see more of mine and Alex's videos. But thanks for joining everyone. Yeah, and also. Yeah, we'll see you.
next week. If you want yeah. to join our Discord, I think we're going to have a session tomorrow, right? That's going to be free to join. Yeah, there's going to be a session just like this one, looking through some hands. Um, so yeah, feel free to join and take part. All right. Thanks for joining.